Hey there once again YouTube, how are you doing today? So, we're going to talk about a few different things today, multiple different things actually. If you haven't already, please check out my website, a link is in the description box below, right under my email address, so check that out if you want to. It can teach you how to find, access, and analyze seismic and GPS deformation data, shows you how to read the many different seismic plots and charts people use, and even contains thousands of seismic plots generated by myself, showing examples for many, many different swarms and events. To start this video off, we are first going to look at the Alaska Aleutian Island chain right here, a little bit to Russia, then Alaska, but still the still part of America, the United States. Notice we do see a magnitude 6.1, and the Aleutian Island arc is well known for volcanic activity. Pretty much is that's pretty much all it is. <laughs> it's just volcanic activity over and over and over again. That's the magnitude 6.1, 27.8 kilometers in depth. Tsunami warning, but I do not believe it caused a tsunami. But the shake report, or the did you feel report, apparently it was very strong. There must have been someone on this island that felt it. Let's go to the event page and check out the 6.1. Line near a volcano, but we'll see a little bit closer in just a second. There's the moment titser right there. Keep going down. Let's see. No. Yeah. So only two people reported feeling it because there's very... Very, very, very sparse population in this area. Now let's zoom in and see if there are any volcanoes nearby, even though pretty much there are. All these are volcanoes, all of them. Let's go to satellite just real quick. All right. Oh, yeah, check out these volcanoes, guys. Yep. Oh, yeah, the entire Lucian Island arc is very volcanic in nature. It struck right off the coast right here. So I don't know. I don't know, guys. Why don't we take a look at the seismic data? doesn't look like these volcanoes erupted in quite a long time. Yeah, it looks like it's been a while, though. I don't know. But let's check out the seismic data for this magnitude 6.1. There have been some other small quakes in the area, too, especially this one right here, which was 1.3 near the Tanaga Volcano, Alaska, 16.8 kilometers in depth. But let's go here just one more time. Let's click Origin. Come on, buddy. Go down, click origin, there we go, quick phases, and it'll show, if you click arrival time, the closest seismic station, which is KIWB in the AV network, short period, vertical, no location code, let's check that out now. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with the closest seismic station to the magnitude 6.1 in Alaska. Let's scoot this forward, whoops, that was too far, let's just scoot this down, shall we? So first we see this was a 4.0 at 35 kilometers in depth, far to the east. And we can tell, according to the P and S wave arrivals, that was likely where it was located and likely the depth is correct. Pretty spread out though, pretty spread out, very strange looking, even though this is a regional earthquake. Far to the east of the magnitude 6.1. Down here, here is the magnitude 6.1 right here. Let's take a look at the waveforms just real fast. Notice how it looks very odd. Very, very odd. I believe that is because this station could be very old. I'm starting to think that this station, KIWB, is very, very old. Because for some of the old stations at Long Valley Caldera in California, when they have larger earthquakes that go beyond the preset amplitude count, sometimes it does look like this, and it makes it look very, very weird. It doesn't even look like a real earthquake until right about here, huh? Doesn't it? Very odd. I think that's just because it's a very, very old station. Apparently it cannot handle a magnitude 6.1. Can't really even see the separations of the P and S waves. Notice we have multiple aftershocks afterwards. Some type of possible, I'm not saying for sure, but some type of possible tremor among the mix. Don't know for sure though. And then there's another earthquake. We have another microquake right there. Then right here we have a calibration pulse. These are what calibration pulses look like. And then we have a couple more earthquakes right here. So you got the spectrogram, mid-range frequencies, probably, probably a little bit farther away from the epicenter. And here's another one right here. And as of the most recent data, as of 11.28 a.m. Pacific Time, May 23rd, 2018, there really is not much going on except some weird background activity, which I don't know what is causing it. But that's not really the point. Ah, that's very weird. Look at that. That's so weird. But again, here's the magnitude 6.1 that struck on the Lucian Island arc near, somewhat near the Tanaga Volcano. Let's move on. Next on the list is Hawaii, which I believe is going to see another round of eruptions pretty soon. Now, we did see some of those DOP HFEs, which is what I dubbed them, deep long period high frequency events, because they do not have dominant low frequencies that cannot be called low frequency events. 
But the thing is, it's very strange how we've seen such a resurgence in them as of late, especially since late January 2019 when uplift actually started to increase a little bit more. I think it is being caused by mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit from the mantle to the surface, almost the surface, to the subsurface magma reservoir of either Mauna Loa or the lower east rift zone. However, I highly, I'm starting to think maybe a little bit of magma is headed towards the lower east rift zone. Yes, because they are seeing a good amount of uplift over there, over there, guys. The ground is swelling much more than Mauna Loa is. Mauna Loa is swelling, yes, but the lower east rift zone, at least in my opinion, is what is seeing the highest amount of uplift right now but the lowest amount of seismicity, something that continues to confuse me like crazy. Doesn't make any sense, right? Okay, moving on to Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa still is inflating, still swelling since it plateaued for a little bit last year in 2018. It plateaued for a little bit, somewhat. And then I think it was right, right around November 2018, that's when it started to skyrocket once again. Uplift continues at Mauna Loa's summit. Most likely from the influx of magma from below, from the subsurface reservoir. But every time we have these DOP HFEs, which in my Facebook Earthquake Watcher group, which uh, a lot of people in there, some people like Jackie, I forget her last name, forgive me, and John Bedeo, they are professional geologists and professional seismologists. So we do have professionals within that Earthquake Watcher group. And it pretty much is unanimous that these long period events, these deep tremor events in Hawaii do signal mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit which i was surprised to have my theory confirmed because i'm not a professional guys i have limited resources and limited knowledge on this stuff but my theory about that turned out to be correct showing that i am on the right track but i don't know where is the magma heading could the magma be coming up through the mantle plume conduit and then splitting off to Mauna Loa and then splitting off to the lower east rift zone that is what i believe moving on we did see some Deep long period high frequency events, actually just one, just one of the tremors, which some people call volcanic tremor. It's weird. It, it, there's really no exact name for it, so I'm just going to stick with DOP HFEs, deep long period high frequency events. We notice at about 558 and 603, we have two earthquakes reported for Pahala, Hawaii off the coast in the normal area where we usually see these DOP HFEs. Let's zoom in just real fast. So this is the normal area where they usually occur, right in this area, but at a very deep depth. The deepest one I believe I saw was 58 kilometers in depth. That's very deep for any of these to be related to volcanic activity. Obviously, they are related to volcanic activity. But every single time we have a big sur resurgence in these, uh, such as, oh, I forget the date. I believe it was the 19th. Was it May 19th? I forget. Please correct me, but I did a blog post and a video on the DLP HFEs. The most in any 24-hour period I've ever seen, nine of them. Over nine of them in a 24-hour period uh, less than a week ago. And then just a day or two afterwards, right after the magma likely crept up to the surface, we saw a big resurgence in seismicity along Mauna Loa's summit. And I believe there were also some quakes down near the, what is that, the Southwest Rift Zone. So I think that seismicity is directly correlated to these events right here and the magma that is coming up to refill Mauna Loa's reservoir. Now, I do have a friend that lives somewhere up in this area, and you can tell lava flows don't just go to the east. They don't just go to the southwest. They, look at this, they can also go all the way down here, guys, all the way to the north. They can go all the way to the north, but usually Mauna Kea is pretty safe. I don't think I've ever seen any lava flows from Mauna Loa go towards Mauna Kea, really. But I think that's very interesting. Notice it's a 3.0, one of the largest magnitudes for DLP HFE. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. It was pretty strong. Going from 48.5 kilometers in depth, the first magnitude 2.3 as part of this tremor sequence. And then 47.7 kilometers in depth, striking a little bit larger. So it was getting shallower and it was getting a little bit stronger. So we know that is showing that magma is coming into either Mauna Loa or the Lower East Rift Zone. I really don't know. It could be going into both. So let's take a look at the seismic data just real fast. And real fast, here's the past 24 hours for Seismic Station HTCD. This is the web recorder on volcanoes.usgs.gov. Notice we see the tremor event right there. So I'm going to call it DOP HFEs, but you can call it volcanic tremor for short. Looks like there's possibly a second one right down there. Now let's go down to HTCD with this one right here. Let's go to the Mauna Loa Summit. Let's go to PLAD at the Mauna Loa Summit. For the past 24 hours look at how strong that tremor event looks on this station 
I don't know why, but they always, they somewhat look a little bit stronger at the Mauna Loa Summit. Very strange. I don't know why. But there it is right there. Let's take a look at the seismic data from Seismic Station PLAD. And I am going to put an analysis page on my website soon about this, so don't you fret. That'll probably be up tonight. And we're also going to cover the Yellowstone Swarm in just a bit, but let's take a look at this strong tremor event. One of the strongest that I have ever seen. One of the. I believe on January, what was it, 27th, 2019? I believe somewhere around there, late January 2019. That is when I first discovered these events. And very strong. Very strong back then. I haven't seen one as strong as that. This might equal the one that occurred in late January. But let's check it out. All right, here we have the seismic data from Seismic Station PLAD in the HV network. Right on the, I believe it's the northeastern portion of Mauna Loa Summit. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But it's on Mauna Loa Summit. And sometimes they seem to be a little bit stronger, although they occur far to the south near Pahala, Hawaii. These DOPHFE events, uh, I, I said HFE, didn't I? HFE is high frequency events, and I said event afterwards. They're DOPHFEs. That is my name for them. But the thing is, is look at this. It's, it, why does it seem a little bit stronger on the Mauna Loa Summit when it's occurring far to the south? PPLD shows a good amount of strength, yes. But I'm surprised that it would show this strong at Mauna Loa, even at these depths. Could be wrong, but this is obviously showing mass magma transport along the Mantle Plume Conduit. I already talked to the professionals in the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network group. It's not a PNSN group exactly on Facebook, but we do have some professionals from PNSN in there, which is great. And they pretty much confirmed my theory that this is correct from the Mantle Plume Conduit, showing recharge of magma going into either the Lower East Rift Zone or Mauna Loa. This deal, PHFE, started with a very strange earthquake. Notice that. I believe they labeled this as a 2.3. Let's see. Where is it? Uh, 2.3 at 48.5 kilometers in depth. That's pretty deep. And then it started going this way. Notice how they usually travel this way. Almost looking like they're going straight to Kilauea. But the Kilauea summit is not seeing a big resurgence and uplift. It is not. It might be swelling just a tiny bit. Because everywhere else is basically swelling. Mauna Loa is seeing uplift. Lower East Rift Zone and Middle East Rift Zone is definitely seeing a good amount of uplift as well. But Kilauea Summit seems to be the less of the three. Very interesting. I don't know why. Kind of looks like the magma would be heading there, but for some reason it's not. Again, the 2.3, 48.5 kilometers in depth at 558.15. 558.25 because the station's a little bit farther away. Let's see. Actually, that's... Only a few seconds of a difference, so we know this is the event that they were stating. As usual with PLAD, we see a lack of lower frequencies. For some reason, with many of these DLPHFEs, we see a lack of frequencies for some weird, odd reason. Although most of the other stations in Hawaii show the lower frequency band, of course. For some reason, PLAD shows mid-range frequencies, which is very weird. I, again, I don't know why that is, but again, we did see a very strong quote-unquote, volcanic tremor event, multiple earthquakes in the mix, along with a background tremor, signifying the ascension of magma within the mantle plume conduit. Most of the time, they do rise. Sometimes they do fall. Sometimes it does seem like it gets a little bit deeper, but most of the time, it is showing magma rising somewhere into the Mauna Loa, Kilauea, or Middle East, Lower East Rift Zone magma reservoirs. And there is pretty much only one of these. We did see kind of like a little tiny microquake. Again, PLAD is very strange in that it removes the lower frequencies. Even earthquakes, even regular reported earthquakes, still see no lower frequencies, really. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I don't know why. But let's zoom out. It looks like we possibly have another DLPHFE right here. It did show on PPLD, so I'm thinking this is another one, but very small. Very, very small. Yep, that definitely is one. Let's see... Okay, so let's move on to the last thing in this video. But before I do that, just a heads up, there was just reported a magnitude 2.0 at 0 0.2 kilometers in depth near, let's see, 12 kilometers south-southeast of Fern Acres, Hawaii. Puuo is right here. It's just to the, I'm going to say, east-northeast of Puuo. Lower East Rift Zone is right in this location right here. Just a little tiny 2.0 just reported, but let's move on. All right, so he reported on the magnitude 6.1 in Alaska, 27.8 kilometers in depth. Apparently, is pretty strong, but luckily, there were not that many people around to feel it. More possible volcanic tremor events, not low-frequency, long-duration volcanic tremor, but those mid- to high-range-frequency volcanic tremor events. I mean, really, 
it's not typical volcanic tremor. Because I tell people to always watch out for volcanic tremor. It's anywhere between 1 hertz to 5 hertz, the dominant frequency range of volcanic tremor. That's for the long duration kind, the kind that pretty much is like a background tremor. Kind of like what Vinny Aminoff saw, and kind of like what Mount Etna sees a lot. But this type of volcanic tremor is strange, the DLP HFEs. I guess it could be called volcanic tremor, because really if you think about it, it is a tremor, and it is volcanic in nature. So technically, yes, it can be called volcanic tremor. But see, that's the thing with seismology. Certain terminology can be used for a widespread range of different events. So it gets kind of confusing. Whenever you state volcanic tremor to someone, they may be thinking of that low-frequency background tremor. Or they could be thinking of these DLP HFEs in Hawaii. So really, it's there needs to be a change with the terminology in seismology. And by the way, in Nevada, they saw magnitude 4.2 near Warm Springs, Nevada. 14.8 kilometers in depth. Let's just take a very quick look at this before we go to Yellowstone, shall we? Only four people reported feeling this. This is the moment tensor right here, fault plane solution. Again, at 14.8 kilometers in depth, only four people reported feeling this magnitude 4.2. Let's check it out in Seismic Program Swarm. Here we have Seismic Station TPH in the LB Network, 02 location code broadband vertical. Since it's broadband vertical, I added a high pass 1 hertz filter to the 8th power. Now let's scroll down. This is the magnitude 4.2 at, what was it again? I forgot. 14.8 kilometers in depth. That's this one right here. In my opinion, it looks like a normal run-of-the-mill tectonic event, but we see it downwards going P wave from this station, just barely showing dilatation, which personally, I do not know what dilatation <laughs> means. I just know that that's what a downwards going P wave means when it's shown on a station. But for, for myself, I don't know what that means just yet. This right here, I don't know what this is. At 853.15, let's see if this is a teleseism, or at least a regional earthquake. At 18, or what What, what was it? Let's see, 853.15. At 853, is it this one? 853, yes, yes it is. The magnitude 6.1 in Alaska, which will show on basically all the seismic stations of the world. Basically, any earthquake magnitude 5.5 and above likely will show on most or all of stations in the world, especially if it's like a magnitude 7 or 6.5. But again, at 845, we see the 6.1 struck Alaska. And at 853, that is when we saw the teleseism arrive on here. I'm surprised the frequencies are a little bit higher than what I would expect, but you can tell this is the event. Because if you go back to 645, or 845, excuse me, notice there's no actual teleseism from the event. But if you go forward to 853, there it is, because it takes a good 10 minutes to reach this station in Nevada, all the way from Alaska. But that's not really what I want to talk about. Let's just go forward, shall we? Anything else interesting? Got these very strange events right here. Don't know what they are. They do not look real to me. Just a little too, I don't know. I don't know what that is. But let's move on just to the earthquake, shall we? Going forward, some of those very weird, almost low-frequency background tremor. And then we see the magnitude 4.2. Are there any aftershocks? Are there any aftershocks? No aftershocks. Just the one. And then this strange, really, really, really strange background tremor. Which actually does not have any lower frequencies than what is shown right here, which is strange. I don't know what that is. Again, not many aftershocks. Let's go to the most recent data available. As of 11.48 a.m. Pacific Time, May 23rd, 2019. Not really seeing any more earthquakes. I'm looking. Eh, that might be an earthquake. That's, that's questionable. That's eh, That could be an earthquake, but to me that looks more like surface noise. But then we still have this very weird activity at around 5 hertz, going up to about 6 hertz. So, I don't know. Very strange. So, let's move on to Yellowstone. And real quick, I just want to put out a warning to everybody that lives on the west coast of the United States, particularly in Oregon and Washington State. ETS, tectonic tremor and slip, has been acting very erratic lately. Even the professionals admit it is early, it is acting erratic, and it is something that they have really never seen before in tremor research ever since 2002. Now, 2002 to right now, 2019, of course, that is a very small range of research compared to a lot of other research in seismology, right? But the thing is, is this has never really been seen before. And plus, we also, right when the ETS was occurring right here, we also had an increase in seismicity mid-range around 3.5.
right around that magnitude, around 30 to 40 kilometers in depth along this area, along the locked zone of the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, now that doesn't mean anything too much. I'm not saying that a mega thrust event is happening, but even the professionals are getting a little wary of what is going on recently with the ETS. And it's very strange. It is acting erratic. And then we also had some earthquakes in the locked zone of the Cascadia subduction zone in strange locations right along this edge. Right down here, we had one right here, then right up here near Nia Bay, and then there was like a very small one right here, and then we had the 3.6 in Oregon right about this location right here. So just have your go bag ready, just in case. I'm not saying a mega thrust event is coming, but I do believe it is more possible now than it ever has been before. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that is what I truly believe. And just a heads up, in Washington State, we did have a magnitude 1.8 at 18.8 kilometers in depth. Just four kilometers northeast of Anacortes, Washington State, down in near Mount Rainier. No earthquakes under Rainier itself. Mount Rainier Stratovolcano itself has been very quiet lately. Very few earthquakes, if any at all. But we did say a, see a burst in seismicity along the West Rainier Seismic Zone, which is what this area is called right here, the WRSZ. A 1.4 12 kilometers in depth, a 1.4 at 11.7, and then a 0 0.8 at 11.7 as well, all within about two hours of each other. So just a heads up with that right there. But now I'm going to go to Yellowstone. That is what I wanted to talk about. Let's see. All right, let's zoom into Yellowstone. The only earthquakes being reported for Yellowstone today is part of an earthquake swarm that actually broke out near the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake. If you follow my research and you watch my videos, you know that I love covering these earthquake swarms near Yellowstone West Thumb Lake. They're my favorite earthquake swarms out of any of the earthquake swarms that happen in Yellowstone because they can, sometimes the rapid fire swarms can contain more earthquakes within a small amount of time period than most other swarms contain over days and days and days and days and days. For example, if you saw a hundred earthquakes occur over two days, you'd be like, oh my God, that's crazy, right? But what if you saw a hundred earthquakes occur in one hour? That would be much more crazy, wouldn't it? Same amount of earthquakes, but you could tell the stress seems to be a lot more prevalent than if it was spread out over two days. Know what I'm saying? Here's another tip of Yellowstone Lake. We have a 1.9, 4.4 kilometers in depth, then this jumps to a magnitude 2.5 at 4.9 kilometers in depth, then a 1.9 at 4.4, basically a cut carbon copy of the first earthquake of the swarm. Well, at least the first reported earthquake. Then we have a 1.7 at 4.3 kilometers in depth. And then a 1.6 at 4.8. None of these have been reportedly felt by anybody at the park. But the thing is, is population is very sparse here, guys. It's a national park. Lots of forests and lots of thick, thick, thick forests, guys. Lots of very, very long trails. I mean, it's not like a place where people actually live. So felt reports are going to be few and far between, even for the largest events. But zooming in, it's right up here, near the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake. I already know what the closest seismic station is. It would be right down here, Borehole 208 in the PB network. I pretty much have all the stations memorized. If University of Utah ever said, hey, we're giving away a free seismograph to anyone who can call us and name all of the seismic stations in the Yellowstone National Park and the WY and PB networks, whoo, I would win that seismograph like that. <laughs> Okay, but really now, we got that earthquake, so only five have been reported, or yeah, yeah, five. Um, tonight, I am going to put out an analysis page on my website. I'm going to do an analysis page for that tremor event in Hawaii, and I'm also going to do an, 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 oh, excuse me, an analysis page on the Yellowstone Supervolcano blog on my website. I'll post a YouTube and Facebook post about it when I do that, so I'll let you guys know when that happens. Don't worry. Again, the largest was a 2.5. Let's see. Let's go here. Now, you can see the earthquake swarm just by looking at the seismic station just from the outside. Now, notice right here, this is the magnitude 6.1. Let's go back. These earthquakes struck pretty strong, guys. This earthquake swarm wasn't too crazy, but this magnitude 2.5, the largest event of the swarm, was detected all the way over here on YHL. I believe that's it right there on YHL. And even YMC, you can see it right here on YMC as well. Very interesting. Every seat, look at this. This is how seismic waves travel. Notice how this earthquake swarm appeared on virtually every single seismic station except basically YMP. Nope, even YMP barely saw a bloop. 
But notice that, how it shows basically on every single seismic station. And, it, and the largest earthquake of the swarm was only a magnitude 2.5. So that goes to show you that earthquakes travel quite far and the seismic waves propagate away from the source like a ripple in a pond. For the last part of this video, let's analyze data from borehole 208 for this earthquake swarm. Here we have the most recent seismic data as of 11.56 a.m. Pacific Time, uh, May 23rd, 2019, from borehole 208 in the PB network, short period vertical, going down. You can see the earthquake swarm right there as of the most recent data. There really is not much, but a very strange low frequency background tremor. I am unsure if that is background tremor, because the ice over the lake, I believe, has already melted, so these could be lake microseisms, but I doubt it. I don't know. It's a little bit too strong for me. I, I don't think that these are micro -seasons. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not qualified because to me, this doesn't really look like actual tremor, in my opinion. But let's just move on. I'm just going to deal with what I know. Okay. So let's scoot all the way up. So we do have some earthquakes, guys. Notice that. I believe that was the 1.9 at 4.4 kilometers in depth. And here we have the 2.5. Notice it does seem like a rapid fire swarm. We do have an earthquake here, an earthquake here, earthquake here, and also here. Notice many, 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 many teeny tiny events that were not reported. Notice all of these little tiny earthquakes. A lot of them were not reported there. Remember, they're only reporting five earthquakes, guys. Doesn't that look like a lot more than just five? And then we have one down here as well. Let's keep going forward, though. Keep going forward. A little more teeny tiny microquakes. And we have another microquake, another one, another one, another one. Multiple, multiple little teeny tiny guys. Lots of them, guys. Definitely way more than five. But I guess those were the only ones they were actually able to locate. But tonight, with my analysis page on this swarm, you will see the total count. Because what I do, yes, it's good to locate earthquakes. But if you're not able to locate them, and but you know the style of earthquakes are still there then you should at least state how many there really were. Because although, let's say you're only able to locate five earthquakes out of a swarm of 20, right? You still should at least somewhat state that that earthquake swarm contained 20 earthquakes. Because obviously we know what earthquakes look like. The separation of the P and S wave arrival. Of course, these were not probably not reported at all. But you can still see the separation of the P and S wave arrivals. I use multiple, multiple seismograms on the seismic program waves to correlate the P and S wave arrivals, mostly just the P waves though, to make sure that they are part of this swarm. And then I total up the earthquake count and then I put it on my analysis page. So that is pretty much it guys. These are very kind of weird looking earthquakes. So it's very odd, very strange looking. That could just be because of borehole 208 and how it's set up, but very strange looking, very strange. Again, there is the 1.9 and 4.4 kilometers in depth. Here's another one. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Keep an eye out for my coming uh, analysis page on my Yellowstone Super Volcano blog under the Seismic Events mid drop-down menu on my website. I will be back very, very soon, guys. God bless, and have a great day. Remember, the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. And really, though, I have found out, especially as of late, that is the truth. See you, guys.